everyone welcome back to candid talk the show where we look at the invisible behind the visible we go into the unknown journeys of some of the most successful peoples in the field of education today i am joined by someone who is an educator from the Indian high school. She manages a lot of things. It's really you know, crazy. She leads students and guides them and encourages them through creativity. She's also like super chill. That's how you can always identify her because she's always smiling and laughing and ready to have a conversation. So let's welcome Dr. Avilasha Shukla Chave to the show. Thank you so much, Miley. Thank you so much for being here today. How are you? How are you feeling? Uh, feeling very excited, obviously, because uh, you know my profession, and this is something which try to reach out everyone, mm. and this is the best way to reach out many people. Those who feel want to be connected with the the area which you said education, so it's more like connecting people, creating more awareness, creating more happiness. Mm. I must say, so it's not about teaching; it's more about happiness. Mm. Yeah, see, creativity, happiness. We will get into that a lot more because I'm very interested in that. You don't get to see that a lot, you know, with school and education and stuff like that because it's always about books. Always. It's always about books. But I think uh, this is more about learning around. Exactly. So what you see around, mm -hmm. what you feel around, that is something which comes in, in the form of education. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, how has summer been for you? This summer was very exciting. Yeah? Yeah, very exciting. So I had just divided few of my days mm. for completely for my family, few days just for my own learning, mm. which I wanted to have it for this year, mm. and few things for having a future plan for my students. Wow! <laughs> so how long was the break? Was it like a month, two months? It is actually forty-five days for us, but because uh, I look into other areas, so normally I have to get connected mm. with uh, the rest of the offices. So in case if any requirement comes, if any queries comes, you should reply always be available. Yeah, always be available. <laughs> so um, are there any exciting things you taught yourself? You know, you said you want to learn new things. Is there anything new? Yeah. I just uh, wanted to visit my parents' house mm. because it was quite long. I didn't go there because of the other family commitments. And my mom recently uh, got with one serious surgery and all. So I wanted to spend time with them because this is a time when actually I can completely give like kind of 100% attention to them. It's not like you only talking on the phone and like looking here right and say, Mama, are you okay? <laughs> are you eating properly? Video call? Have you ever had a video call with them? It's just like, yeah, no, it's not it is, <laughs> Exactly. But it is very different when you stay with them mm. because this is a time they need you. More than anything, they just want to sit they just want to share their views, their experiences, their feeling. And I personally feel when they become old, it's always better to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. So video call and staying here is very difficult to get them connected. So I just say, now you both sit. Mm -hmm. I will be there. And we had had a very good time with them. And I decided them to visit some of the places nearby, which even I was like you know, unable to reach. Mm. And then my mother says, I'm not able to walk. I said, no, but the wheelchair is there. <laughs> and we took wheelchair and we took her to the hill station of Madhya Pradesh, Kachwani. And that was a wonderful time. <laughs> uh -huh. So do you notice like when you visited your parents, did you just go back to like completely go back to like being a kid? Oh, yeah. Of course. Always, yeah. always, even till now. Uh, I'm around 45 plus and my father is 75 but still when I go he treat me like I'm still very young mm. no you can't do this you are not able to I say no papa I'm big enough to handle it <laughs> they say no 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 you are still young so better to listen us but still we say whenever you reach there mm. you suddenly feel like you're again the 10 year or 15 year old child and whenever you go your mom, the way she touch, the way they keep hand on your head. Whenever you're sleeping, they just do a simple, simple massage. I think this is all which we are missing. At least being a teacher, we are lucky that we get that 45 days off <laughs> to go and uh, meet them. So that was the best time I had. The transition from summer break to, you know, like going back to work, 
for students i know it's like terrible obviously because they would get to me rather cry than go back to school because i had an epiphany today where i was sitting casually i'm just like laying down and then all of a sudden i start panicking and then i'm like why am i panicking my heart was racing and then i'm like oh i go back to uni in a week and then i'm like oh wait now i and then i wanted to cry like actually wanted to start crying <laughs> so were you like were you did you feel any, that kind of yeah. way obviously all teachers yeah. i say especially teacher, yeah them. yeah once yeah, because it's if it is a shorter period of mm-hmm. time uh we always get okay anyways we are in that same pace of work and then your body is like you no know, get habitual of having those routines and everything but when you go back home during summer or even if you go somewhere out you start uh, getting that uh, homesickness oh, yeah. and the days uh, when you are very close to the reopening again that kind of goosebumps some kind of nervousness yeah. Yeah. and lots of planning need to be there mm-hmm. because you want yourself to be ready mm-hmm. before the students come home right and that is a moment when each and every one find a kind of like a different anxiety yeah so even teachers sometimes when they get up and they say oh god god <laughs> <laughs> it's like sometimes body like no refuses to get up yeah yeah it's like you can we get at least that one hour or two hour a day something so this happened with everyone children mm-hmm. also like they take a week to settle down teachers i can say take 3 to 4 days to settle <laughs> only that much difference is there but these teachers also find it difficult after a long break so it's always like a right towards like the last week of things towards the end of things all the work comes pouring in and you're like i haven't done any of that stuff maybe i started and then i just stopped and now i have to do so much so work. much work. so it's crazy scary. You yeah. Do you ever find yourself like because of the tiredness that you said you experience? Have you ever like you know fallen asleep maybe in school or something where you're just uh, like not exactly because my profile is something where I have to run around constantly. Yeah. yeah. So I hardly sit in my office. My office is when really I have to sit peacefully and draft some proposals and everything. So only that time I sit. Otherwise I keep on. So that problem is not there. But yeah. But when I reach home sometime, so sometimes if I'm replying and on the sofa i sleep <laughs> even sometimes uh, when we are working and attending some online meeting then the condition goes oh, because yeah. you are so tired and when you are quiet for a longer period of time you just listening mm-hmm. that time your eyes they refuse to that happens to me all the time in university two hours <laughs> lecture you just yeah. stare at the professor and you're just like especially at pdm classes yeah. i can't it should be legal in the classes <laughs> correct mm-hmm. and you can't hide they like, know if if the camera is on mm-hmm. okay you have to just because your seniors are there or your colleagues are there they are just watching you what if it is off camera okay then so you have to but that is not the good way to do it because when you are there you should be there mm-hmm. but i know that some of the uh, areas like when you have very exhausting day, mm-hmm. it's a long day teachers they find a little tired it's like no can i get the 5 minute cut close means like just i close it off so there is a way to deal with this kind of uh, tiredness in yoga actually they say you have to just close your eyes for a few minutes and with the close eyes you have to just see your roof or just try to like no bring your uh, a uh, kind of like energy mm. in such a way that you feel that you are going towards the terrace so oh visualizing yeah so. visualizing so they say mind actually get diverted uh-huh. so immediately you find yourself refreshing because it's something which you feel mm. so the way you feel your body reacts in that same way. has that been helpful for you it is a lot yeah imagine you are in park or imagine you are near waterfall uh-huh. so automatically it refreshes you so try <laughs> okay 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 just try to so you have to just close your eyes mm-hmm. take deep breath and imagine that you are somewhere in the green park flower areas mm-hmm. and immediately you find yes, your body has started it will react to vibes and reactions so i love that okay you are dr abhilasha obviously this means you have a phd Yeah. I have I haven't met anyone with a PhD in a while so I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm just like 
wow, PhD after a while. Because <laughs> I saw the doctor and I was like, oh, wow, nice. So you will have your PhD in environmental geography. Yeah. Wow. What? How? <laughs> so first of all, it's really a very weird combination. And uh, every time people say, why geography and why environment? Mm -hmm. So I completed my PhD in 2002. Mm -hmm. And that time, the concept of environment mm -hmm. was like, you know, just started. Right now, that everyone talk about sustainability. And that was a period of time which has actually given me a kind of like a hit that this is a topic you should mm -hmm. take care of. And then when I spoke to my professor, my guide, and uh, when I asked him, sir, I wanted to have something in this. He said, let's go. And luckily, my synopsis got selected. And uh, they said, let's start. So as soon as I finished my uh, post-graduation, immediately I started uh, researching on the topic. And that time, the environment people were not very much aware of. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the best period. And that was the best selection, I can say. Because the same year they had started with medical geography, which was a very new concept for many people. They don't know. But the geography and environment is very much interrelated. So yeah. it was a very good concept when uh, we submitted our synopsis in terms of transforming the environment conditions mm -hmm. due to the different, uh, you can say, the practices humans are having, industries, urbanization, and more is your attitude. Mm -hmm. So that was causing the major problem because everyone knows like humans are the one and their behavior and their attitude which makes a lots of difficulties. Yeah. So that was kind of like subject parameter for yeah. me. Like the pandemic is a good example because when everyone was inside more trees started growing yeah, and the air was just cleaner. Yeah, yeah, I was and now it's all back to like shh, it's all Again, again, yeah. again, back to those uh, areas where we are, now we are struggling mm. with it. I must say that uh, this the word sustainability, which now it's coming, all these areas, I think the people of our generation, because I believe our parents and our grandparents were the one who has actually protected the nature. Yeah. But the generation we belong to, we were so ambitious, we want to make all changes, like so sudden changes. So that period has actually created these kind of disturbances. This generation is again back into action, who is really trying to protect it. Mm -hmm. So I personally feel that this kind of subjects need to be you know, promoted mm -hmm. more, where the children can get into deep study. Mm -hmm. Because that has really given a very broad aspect of you know, changing the core subjects. And people, they say geography means it's just a land. Rocks. Rocks. And that <laughs> works. But no, it has a lots yeah. and lots of it. So that time it was introduced environment, mm -hmm. medical, agriculture, gemophilosy, even the human, you know, human science. So I was lucky enough to get into a proper stream, I can say. <laughs> so, you know, as we were talking, the environment and discussions about the environment is such a hot topic, especially right now. Because there's always something or the other, you know, to protect the environment, to protect everything around us. Right. Since your field has sort of changed over time, how do you think your PhD, you know, your your knowledge in this one subject, do you think it still allows you to sort of talk about it right now in your yeah. teaching as well yeah. in any way? So I was teaching in uh, SNT University, Juhu, mm. Mopad, and I was teaching the PG diploma courses. Mm. In environment. So before coming here, I was with these PG girls and uh, we really did a wonderful job back in Mumbai. And uh, even in our group, there is something which we need to focus on is the sensible, right? You are sensible enough to deal with all these things. Sensitive one and on the other side, the sensible. You don't know that how your body and how your actions react things so you get sick so fast but you should know why you are getting sick you are allergic to air right you are you are totally surrounded with the environment recently this evening only i was reading one a news article that in number north there was a gas leak and everyone is facing issues in terms of breathing yes, and eye irritation yeah. everything and nowadays this is very common in most of the urban places but nobody bothered about that why 
even here also when we have a classes when we go for teaching and all and when we are discussing about any of the topic because recently we had introduced our uh, uh, the upcoming program mm. i can say it's a conference so we had taken the environment as a major uh, aspect of united nations so united nation environment program under that we are having these kind of conversation so i personally feel that my phd has really given me a kind of like um, a Pathway. vision yeah. or i can say a path that i can relate things i can correlate mm -hmm. that and the best thing is i can guide my students to think in that perspective because this is something which is a systematic approach to reach mm -hmm. anywhere in any decision if you don't look into that way it's very difficult to get because when you see the amount of waste we are generating just a simple example or the plastic use mm -hmm. right it's very easy to say ban plastic it is very difficult to keep yourself away from the plastic so when i deal with my students at least i have a solid reason mm -hmm. i have a logic that i can convince them so i think when you go higher and you take a higher uh, studies and the phd's and all or i can say research actually help you a lot that's the reason that nowadays research based projects are now incorporated in your curriculum mm -hmm. so everyone realized the importance of research and that is the reason that most of my students are really doing well in terms of these kind of projects i think uh, it's easier for you because you have a background in science and then you also help students through creativity so you can exactly. incorporate both of them and make both it fun instead them. of just boring like oh, don't use plastic don't use this don't do that okay. yeah so did you ever imagine while getting a phd like you know when you were a kid did you ever imagine you'll go as far as like getting a phd did um no my first ambition was to be a ips officer whoa and i did try for it and i thought i even if not then i will definitely go for uh, the police services mm. and during my graduation time i fell for the army the short services uh, So, so I got selected, but same period of time when we were in uh, post graduation, and my professor was very good. Like he was the someone who has really given us a very different way of uh, looking around and seeing the subject. So he was like you know, talking a very smaller, smaller thing, which actually gave us a view that education really is something which can bring out change in the world. So it's not. There are so many professions you can go. Um, I was selected, then I had a choice: should I go for this or I continue with my research? So my father also said, "Ki you decide where you can see your future." And I always like interaction, talking to people, especially like you know the younger ones, older ones also, because you get so many ideas from them. So then I said, "Okay." Uh, so army and police is on one side. Let me go to. <laughs> <laughs> so the way I came into this uh, profession, so that was a kind of. So instead of a gradual change, it was sort of like an aha yes. moment for you. Did you have? Did you go through some of the army training? Was that also kind of like? Yeah. For me? <laughs> <laughs> I was because my brother was there and he was selected when he was in its engineering, and then he really said, "Ki oh, the training is so tough." They said that, and I was from the army school, so. Mm -hmm. You know that what kind of negative issues and all they have. Then somewhere that was like it's not a very comfortable. Part. Even though my ambitions were very high for that, but still some point and the some corners were saying it is not very safe. <laughs> it is not very secure. <laughs> so I still regret that I did. Uh, I did at least those five years of services I could have done for my nation. But it's okay. I'm serving for my nation. What would you now? I'm trying to put together whatever army knowledge I have. What kind of um, sort of task? I don't want to say task force is that the right word. Would you have gone to? What would you have? What role would you have preferred if you were in the army? Um, actually, I had taken it for a general, mm -hmm. but that was basically on ground. So even I decided because it's army is not always about. field yeah right you have so many professions so some of the office structures i had planned for and maybe some of the training area 
but training to 100 percent you have to go through the entire process no matter you're going for uh, medical or you're going for the engineering or anything but uh, i thought of having some of the uh, the office jobs or the training jobs because i personally feel i'm good in training mm -hmm. and this is something which is giving me a kind of satisfaction that uh, the views can be delivered carefully to one from the other because many of my friends uh, from my school days are still in our mm -hmm. And I know that the way they are into trainings, some are on training, some are on field. Yeah. So it depends. But training was the area where I thought, yes, we will go. Thrive. Yeah. yeah. Always for the... Because no one expects, you know, they'd always probably pick something that, that was less intense. Less but intense. Then yeah. It's very rare to see someone who will actually go all in. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you were a, a professor for a while. You used to teach PG students, uh, girls. How would you say that the how would, how do you view the difference between teaching you know PG students and then teaching like school students? What are some major? Oh differences? It was it was really a big change for me. I can say it was a drastic change mm -hmm. because when I was in Mumbai till two thousand uh, two thousand six, I was teaching the PG students. Okay, uh, their understanding is always at the level, uh -huh. right? It is just a thing you have to just say. You say, you express, and they were able to understand, mm. right? But when I came here, I joined one uh, company. Mm. And it was, I was not planning to go back again into uh, education because I was not very much aware of uh, Dubai. And it was so sudden that I decided to come with my husband. So when I resigned and I came here, so I was with a company. And one of my friend, uh, their daughter was in Indian high school. And she said, Ki, Auntie, you have a very good uh, control over education and everything. Why don't you try for the teaching? I say I had never planned anything here doing it because I was already with uh, one company as a sales uh, manager. Mm. So, and it was kind of something related to environment because they were talking about refilling the cartridges mm. rather than throwing it. Mm. Better to refill it because sometimes you don't need so much of uh, ink and cartridges yeah. now. So I was very happy with the job, but she said, you know, you must try, you must try. Our school is so good and it's one of the oldest school. And she gave me a very nice picture of Indian <laughs> <laughs> I was so tempted. I said, yeah, there is some school like this. So so. It's like, it's like me, but when I buy a book, I only buy it because I like the cover. <laughs> cover, exactly. Pretty cover, exactly. hardcover, nice, hard you know. Cover, nice. So she has projected it very nicely. So then my husband also said, Ki, for you, it's a very long day. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try? So I said, okay, let's try. And just we had submit my uh, CV there. And very next day, I got a call. Can you please come and join? I said, huh? I didn't give notice period to my previous company. And then I came. And obviously, when you start teaching, and after like 2003 to 2006, I was with uh, teaching only and with the kids. I felt, okay, chale, let's try with the younger kids, I mean, what? Even I'm not done weird. Mm. So, but when I checked with the ministries and all, they say, you know, masters is okay for uh, like teaching in school here. So my attestation and everything got approved. Everything was done. Then I went to the classes and I was given grade seven and eight. And that was a big challenge for me. So you are teaching year, PG. Yeah, what year was this? <laughs> and now you reached a grade seven and eight. What year was this? Like two thousand? Uh, it was two thousand six. Six. Okay. So kids again keep changing every day. <laughs> yeah. And like you no, know, sometimes when I start speaking, obviously my level is like to explaining is to a higher. Then all the kids used to stare at <laughs> me. Like, that what example I'm giving? Then I raise no, no, no. Russia control. You have to come down and take a very simple example. <laughs> But always my expectation was very high from students because mm -hmm. I wanted that kind of result to come out. And I think that challenge worked very well. And uh, the classes where I was teaching, those kids really developed that kind of thinking. And that's the reason that slowly, slowly when I went, the grade 10 was mm -hmm. given to me. And the students has really done a wonderful job. I must say you can't underestimate these youngsters because I think they are more clever than us and their really thinking is good because this is a time when actually they start building up the 
ideas. Mm. They, this is the time when they really try to understand the concept. And if you really give them these kind of challenging tasks inside the classroom, outside, even if you have a general conversation, tell them, think why this is happening, why this is happening. So they, they really take education in a different way. For example, uh, we were just discussing and we were having a uh, one small session with our kids and we said they were they were not very much aware of the Indian parliament system. I said, then why can't we just watch movies, okay, which are based on the Indian mm. political system? Because there was a topic that why women are not involved in politics. So there was a question. And they were not able to understand. Because they had not feel it. I said, okay, so let's see, we'll see this picture. And we took an extra class on Saturday and we sat and saw the movie. Similarly, for the nationalism in India, mm. they don't have any much of like knowledge. Gandhi, okay, they had read about the Gandhi ji and everything. So we put like you know, extra Saturday and we played the movie Gandhi. Oh, Gandhi, I watched it too, yeah. So it was something which was like, you no, know, they had really adapted it very well. And then the multiple sources of learning they had adopted. So now I think now education has changed. And yes, they are giving you opportunities to explore more. And it is something which we can deal with them. So age difference is there, yes. And it's our responsibility to find out that what kind of resources we can provide mm -hmm. them. Where on my 11th and 12th boys and girls, when they come to me and we discuss anything, it's just I have to give them, okay, boys and girls, this is what we are looking into it. This is what the result, I need it. And this is the way how we go about it. And very next day you'll get the answers mm -hmm. or you get whatever the proposal and the plan is. So difference is there. But yes, you need to find out the way. <laughs> the so not a lot of, you know, teachers would go about by like, you know, showing you the movie, going through some like visual process and helping yeah. you understand because I'm a visual learner. It helps me immensely. Correct. So you weren't like a very strict teacher. You were very like... Um, I, was... I was strict because when the matter comes for discipline because uh -huh. your learning comes when you are disciplined. So only for that reason. But yes, when we start having any discussion, then I let it be open. Mm -hmm. Then no restrictions because when you debate... When you discuss and you ask questions, then you really learn a lot. And yeah. sometimes we'll keep it open. Okay. If not, okay, let's, why don't we search this on the internet? Okay. Let's, why can't we see over what is available in the, uh, good. So I think the technology has really helped us in that way. When any kind of questions come, any kind of debate come, any kind of queries come. So we are able to answer. it. And even the children, they find it very connected. So I, think yes challenge there but ones. don't you think kids these days though especially these days they're kind of scary at some point yes scary not okay i mean i i've seen some very un i don't even know if that's a word but like undisciplined kids i've had them in my class i have them yeah. in university so lack of and especially like the vocabulary changes and vocabulary it's changes so a lot especially yes. now yeah no. makes no sense even yes. see, this is how i think about it maybe the previous generation was scared of us now we're scared of the next generation now now we know what they felt what they felt yeah so you taught in the 2000s and you gradually watched them grow and yeah. fresh new people fresh new ideas fresh new weird words and also what was it like when you started teaching what was their thing what was like their weird thing that they used to do yeah um if you see the ones which were there with me 2006 to 2010, they were very receptive. Mm. Okay, whatever you are saying, they try to take it in a very positive manner. It's like if I say, child, don't stand like this. Okay, if you have to pay attention, you have to look mm. eye contact. Mm. And they used to listen. But nowadays, children are very much pampered. They think everything is available online. So we don't need to see this. We don't need to listen. Chat GPT open. <laughs> exactly. 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 So this is what is happening nowadays. Children are trying to get connected with their teacher because everything cannot be like to learn through internet or mm. through technology. Sometimes you need people who have gone through yeah. this process. Right. They know in and out. They know the minute things which you can observe, which you can learn. It's like 
kind of like SWOT analysis. What went well? <laughs> Stands <laughs> with this opportunity is threat. Exactly. So every year we do, but yes, we had find a lots of changes. The language they use in class, the way they greet teacher. Before it was like, ma'am, good morning, good afternoon, how are you? I hope everything is well now. This we have to say, child, good morning, child, good afternoon. Does anyone come up to you like, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Hi, ma'am. So let's nice change. Two, three times the child say, ma'am, dude. <laughs> I said, really? I'm friendly, but okay, dude. <laughs> Oh, I I think I'm I I'm scared because it triggers some old memories. Because <laughs> if because I went to CBSC school and if I went up now yeah. not now but even then if I went up I don't think I've ever done it but you know an accident you know some are friendly teachers they'll be like that hey, we're friends <laughs> it's fine it's okay they're super chill and then some teachers if you accidentally also call them no you go like hey yeah or you go like dude and they yeah. just go like stand in front of the whole class. <laughs> They make you stand in front of the class and like turn around, look at the wall. They didn't make us do it. Thank God. That is not uh, happening nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> this words and dude is very common. Chill, man. I said chill. Yeah, I'm very chill. But still at certain points. Not... So these words, man, just chill. Just chill. <laughs> okay. And then nowadays, so there are a few songs, you know, uh, some calm down, some calm down. Oh I hate God. that song. I hate that song. It's so, I hate it. I don't like it. It's so very used to it. See, see, you are in the middle of some work. It's an urgent work. The timeline is very short. We have to go just, just calm down. Just calm down. I see why, but then I find it. Then I spoke to my son. I said, do you know what song is this? Then he said, okay. So this is a way they are now, uh, their communication has changed. I said, yeah. They, they are friendly, but yes. Sometimes the friendliness leads to casualness and like Very casual. carelessness. Yeah. And it's even yes. hard to explain them. Yeah, because if you don't take it seriously, mm. because you should know, because that is the reason that um, most of the students, they had really um, reached to a level where they had stopped respecting teachers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, they need to understand parents and teachers. Sometimes they are strict with you because they want you to grow mm. as a best human being, as a best personality. So if you are having anything like untidy hair, right? Who likes untidy hair? Yeah. <laughs> right? And if you don't take bath, you don't brush properly, your parents are going to say, teachers are going to say. This is something which talks more about their own growing personalities. Yeah. So this is something where nowadays kids are not getting into those days. If my hair is big, oh, this is a style, man. You don't know. So you can't say, okay, cut your hair. It's like long. So these things are changing. And I think children need to change their perspective. For me, going to an international school directly from a CBSE school, I got <laughs> so scared. I started crying the first day and I called my mom. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't because because I was in such a protected environment. You know, CBS is over discipline and like everyone knew everyone's name. Exactly. Yeah, that was all cool. Ninth grade, I went. I spent like over a year with some people in class. They'd look at me in tenth grade and go like, oh, "What was your name?" I'm sorry, do I know it? <laughs> and I know their name, and then I'll be like, "That's when I like make a very judgy face at them." <laughs> and then like these personal these girls and all their personalities, and then it's like they do some very like very not so right things and you go like what no they may follow the teachers circulate some of them yeah they'd like take pictures of them and post it on snapchat or something so so stupid she's so stupid something some weird stuff like that and that's like very it made me panicky i'm just like this is not right no this is not right this is not right because see even um at certain aspect you need to understand some people have they have this habit of like even nowadays it's becoming more because children want to have kind of like views okay in their instagram or maybe reddit if i'm not wrong okay they have their mm-hmm. accounts tiktok thank god tiktok is banned but still they are using it tiktok banned in oh india my God. They, yeah they they so they take pictures mm-hmm. which is was the biggest uh, drawback of using technologies so they do take t- teachers writing and doing something and sometimes when they explain obviously the facial expressions change and sometimes they just click and randomly they put some remark and you are absolutely right they post it on the social media 
and I think that, that was the reason that UAE has recently launched a law like, that the students, even if they are into any of such kind of activities, that will be punished. So, children, they don't understand when Nothing they are in that. Them. Yeah, if someone like, I don't know, I think it's also that when you're disciplined, you get bullied for the discipline. Like I had this whole, I'd wear my ID card, carry my tiffin bag like this, <laughs> wear my shoulder bag and I'd walk in. Everyone else used to pocket my yeah. ID card. I started doing that obviously later, but most of the, for like three years, I, I used to wear my ID card. <laughs> I, I used to have my tiffin bag with me like this, my shoulder bag like this. I used to do my hair because it was exactly. very long. Yeah, and I, I have a habit of it. And it's like... It was scary for me too because I didn't know like it's it's the what you're doing is wrong. Right. But if you point that out and it's like oh you're gonna get bullied out for it and you're gonna say some really mean things that you're not equipped to handle mentally. You know? Yes. You're yes. just like kind of thrown into that. Program. Thrown into that. And the reason is uh, this generation is actually more into kind of like a show. What this one person in front of you or the the people around you are doing, mm-hmm. and if you're doing something different from them then it's over. So yeah. that is something which is actually painful. That's what I'm saying. So today everyone is having that kind of like heavy hair, okay, making a kind of like uh, a different hairstyles and they don't even bother to have oil or maybe like even don't put oil but at least nicely comb your hair. Girls also, they don't want to tie, okay, they still prefer to have open hair. So as and when they get time, okay, you have a, you have a time Especially like in summer as well, like open hands. And the thing is when we are in education line, okay, Mm -hmm. when we are in a school, there is something word which is called as uniform. Yeah. Right? Everyone should look same. That is the real meaning of uniform. But the children nowadays, they really don't care. Individuality. Yeah. (laughs) They say, man, why why can't we have like, no, uh, like, a common casual wears and everything because we had four years no uniform in our school. Wow, we... Oh, yes. The kids were very happy because management decided that uh, the COVID is there and yeah. it will be extra pressure on parents. So children were coming in a casual uniform, whatever they want to wear and all. And they were very happy for four years. And then when the uniform came, so it took little time for them to digest because they were very happy wearing the branded shirts <laughs> and pants and shoes and we had say? those only for class parties you can wear colored dress <laughs> for international day or class party but that's it that was that's also it. a luxury but it's now a luxury it's, it's, yeah and uh, uniform word is something which really bring you into a level which is like it's it's a common mm-hmm. right no one is rich no one is poor no one is here no one is there it's, it's like even in one platform yeah and i think this generation is not understanding that what exactly that uniform and what exactly the way you should come to school. Mm. So there we are actually missing that. So ID card, as you said, nobody is ready to wear. Okay, everyone is having either in the bag or the pocket. And when you need to say, okay, where is your ID card? Okay, it's here. <laughs> Please wear it. Right? So, yeah. They have a very casual attitude about this. I like the perspective that no one's poor, no one's rich, everyone's the same. No one's, I've never thought about it that way. Because this is something, because see, if I'm wearing some branded clothes, right? And the person next to me is having a very general stuff. Somewhere or the other, the person had that, why I'm not able to? Then they start pressurizing Mm people. The children are not that grown enough that they understand these kind of issues. Parents and adults can. But the younger ones, it's very difficult. And they say, my friend has so many pants, she has so many shoes. Uh, why I can't take? Why you are not letting us stay? So these kind of things, even the parents, they understand. right? So even the children, they should understand that parents cannot buy every time everything. for them. There is a kind of compromise they had done in their life. And it is our time to do the same for them. So that uniform thing need to be taken, I think, very seriously. You should respect because everyone is there to gain it's not that we are just going for show college me what do we want you can do <laughs> but school days i seriously prefer that they should college was also yeah. an eye-opener <laughs> so since, yeah, 
since we're talking about students and kids, I'm curious to know what were you like growing up? What were you like as a kid? Uh, I was very naughty. And uh, as you can make out, yes, I always laugh and smile. And that was the reason that most of the competitions, uh, I had really done a good um, scoring, one you can say, won the awards and prizes. And uh, during my college days also, I was very highly active uh, in terms of extracurricular activities, sports, and NCC. So oh, NCC, yeah. You used to go for those 10 days, 15 days camp. Yeah. And it was like kind of army training camp. Exactly. <laughs> and 2008, uh, uh, 1999 and 2000, when I just graduated. So that year, Varsha, like having this uh, system, to one of my uh, sir said, Ki, why can't you apply for the 26th January, uh, the Republic Day Parade happening in Delhi? Mm. I said, sir, do you feel that I get selected? Then he said, yes, try. So I said, okay. So uh, 1999, I got selected for uh, representing our state in the 26th January Republic at Rajput. So that was a wonderful time. And I used to, like, you know, I had a bike and I used to roam around. <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's not exactly, but yes. Kind of like that was a tomboy kind of. Very active, very extroverted, kind of must. Yes, but never compromised with my study. So that was the best thing. Normally what happened when you are involved in all these activities, you go around having camps and like, you know, going for the sports tournaments and everything. And I was a state uh, level badminton uh, player. So everyone was thinking I will miss my studies and all. Thanks to God. I was the continuous college topper. Why so, didn't you continue badminton? Uh, Post-graduation, it was quite difficult for me to manage because uh, I decided to like oh, just take as a time pass for a uh, few other programs, which I really liked a lot. So I do paint. So painting was the one which I feel, ki, okay, I should take it more serious. So that time in 2001, I did my exhibition. So my entire focus from sports moved to arts. Oh, wow. And the same period of time, I decided to have my own uh, kind of like a name. So I should not uh, disturb and trouble my parents. So just to get the pocket money, I started uh, teaching in one school. Mm -hmm. So after teaching school, I used to go to my university. And from there, when I come back, I used to have different painting classes. For the younger kids so sports was like but still i feel like we should continue because it's something which are healthy practices you should adopt one sports uh any kind of sport you must have in your life so either you take badminton you take swimming or you take volleyball anything we should play but i think girls are not very much of my age i can say that period of time no one was very um, <laughs> Yeah, he's do sports and they were like more into and that was a competition I'll tell you it's really funny but whenever you get like you know, your relatives and that was a time when you actually go for the marriage proposals and everything <laughs> so what the girl do oh my god girls play she don't do anything at home like no she's not into all this thing so that was also a kind of like uh, the society pressure mm -hmm. to change your uh, interest and way of thinking your life. That period was different. <laughs> so I'm talking something which is like 1999 and 2000. So it's like 24 years back. Yeah. And changes. Yeah. It's <laughs> so what were some things that you struggled with as a teenager? Uh, if I talk about me, yeah, first thing which I think every child say, the body shaming. Yeah. Uh, but not in terms of exactly body, but the color. So I was very dark. And most of the time, my friends always say, why don't you do something, right? Whenever I meet any of my relatives, they say, uh, they just used to say my mom, tell her to do something. Because she's like, you know, getting darker day by day. Because I used to go out and I used to play a lot. I was always there, as I mentioned. 
So my outdoor activities are very high. And every time they say, oh boy will like her if she has a dark color. And that was a time when I was always thinking, Ki, really the skin color matters. That was always changing me up. And was God grace didn't affect my life at all. <laughs> But yeah, that was a period of time which has really, like, you know, being a teenager, uh, that was something which was like, you know, again and again it was pointed out by friends and by relatives. One more challenge I had faced was really um, in terms of emotions, right? You get mood swings very fast as, you know, the teenager <laughs> issues. And sometimes you don't know how to balance with it because... There's no one you can openly talk about. Not you have so many counselors. You have even your parents are very friendly. My mother realized that something is happening at house because brother was okay, but when it matter comes to us, you're finding out so difficult to cope up with certain issues. And then my mother became very friendly. So before uh, I can say grade nine, she was very strict, but from grade nine and ten, she was very friendly. And I'm very happy that she's still like a best friend for me. So yes, emotional challenges are there, which every teenager faces. Even we did. I think you must have faced the same. I, too much. <laughs> everything you feel, it's not right. This is wrong. Why they are saying this? Why they are doing this? And everything you take personal, even though if it is not, but you take everything personal, like it is given to you. It was for you. So that actually, it's not good, but touch wood. With the parent support, we never had any serious issues. So easily cope up with all these issues, problems, teenage issues, even the college admissions going around and all. The transition was very smooth. Luckily. So as you grew older, did you naturally find yourself letting go of these like mood swings or whatever they may be, whatever issues you struggled with once, did you just naturally let them go? Yeah. It was COVID. Uh, most of these were the natural, <clears throat> but uh, the anger something which is I think we need to work on. Yeah. So we belong to a very strong spiritual family, so that has actually helped to control. So it's like you saying why we are having this anger? What is the need of? Mm -hmm. This can be done in this way. This can be done in this way. So the the level I can say people who are very short tempered, I think they should go for meditation. <laughs> It will really work, really help to cope up such kind of issues. And that has helped us. So until now, if something is there, I say no control. <laughs> Take deep breath, try to concentrate and then immediately my anger goes off. Analyze the situation. Situation. Yeah. See, Thank because you. your perspective will be different. My perspective is different. There may, it's, it's possible that we may not come up to a common conclusion. There will be uh, differences in opinions, view, but we should respect. Mm -hmm. We need to find out that why you have that opinion, why I have that opinion. And when you start thinking in that point, your anger and your things automatically move it off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's... <laughs> So uh, I wanted to ask you about your spirituality as well, but we'll get into that um, pretty soon. Do you think... Um, Times back then, you know, they were very simple, not so complicated, it's very charming, very calming, yeah. kind of. <laughs> so what is something that you like genuinely like miss about that time? What's your favorite memory that will always, you know, sort of you keep in your heart? I must say that I'm missing meeting people. Uh -huh. Right now what has happened, it's like your WhatsApp is there, <laughs> okay, your phone is there, and you have this, okay, if anything is there, text and finish. Children, they don't want to go out, mm -hmm. right? And we were the one, the moment we enter home, we used to keep our bag in our places, wash hands, eat. Can I go out for play? <laughs> that was the first statement. And when we go out for playing, you don't believe that the hours pass like anything. Mm -hmm. It's like two hours, three hours, four hours. Then my mother has to remind, child, you have to come back. You have home. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, it's so hard for students 
or the children to make them go they want to sit at home they just want to play games mm-hmm. they are with their instagram they are with their uh, video games but they don't want to go out so that social interaction everyone is missing even we miss because you are so busy with your schedule and even when you say okay this weekend let's go and meet people mm-hmm. and nowadays it's like you have to take appointment to meet people <laughs> this has become a uh, story yeah hey, okay are you free are you at home earlier before that's like direct drink you are there. means you need not to ask anyone openly you can go any time you can meet anyone it was so good and that has really taught you lots of life lessons like now it is so it's like planned if my guest is coming i have to clean my house separately <laughs> i will keep it nice decorated and earlier before to it's like if no no my full house is mess if the clothes are there i have to just remove the pile of those clothes <laughs> okay come and find space and sit that kind of connectivity was there before and i still remember that most of my aunt and my family friends it's <laughs> like mummy i'm not eating at your home today because aunty already gave me food mm-hmm. right it was that mm-hmm. like no a kind of like homely touch nowadays we are inviting people okay you are invited for it or you are invited for half the time they never show up they never show up so this is something which i personally feel is now it's very much formal the people are not taking it like how it's supposed to be social skills are not declining day by day even if anyone is having birthdays and all we prefer to sending them whatsapp messages happy birthday yeah that's it but we are not showing up we are not going to them to wish or maybe even i say and nowadays so nobody give call so that social skill nowadays everyone is lagging behind so this i miss a lot that is a drastic change rest everything is fine you can manage with the time changes but social skill need not to change it should be there that is something which give you uh, a different perspective mm-hmm. right and i can say we are the social animal that's why we are staying together so we should stay together <laughs> right stay connected so i think as you grow older especially now it's so much more common is that friendships they tend to naturally just like move out of your life especially now you know i don't it's a struggle to see to make friends yeah. now it's painful so um, was it the same for you did you have any sort mm-hmm. of issue? earlier before or if i see myself back in my uh, school days or college days it was very natural even when we were traveling in, in the buses we make friends mm-hmm, yeah. you know okay what you have in your tiffin sharing tiffins and all even if you are from the same locality and if you are traveling together we became friend and nowadays it is difficult because nobody everyone try to see whether that person is of my standard or up to my <laughs> expectations but earlier and i never felt that same because anyways i'm talkative so i make friends very fast so if anything is happening so you need to be little down to earth in that way and luckily i had the maximum number of friends in my <laughs> i can say entire life <laughs> whatever i had lived till now so i had good number of school friends i had good number of college friends even i'm still in touch with so whenever i had go to their town i always try to find out time to go and meet them but this is something which refresh you like how when you are reaching to your parents okay you get your childhood memory back when you are meeting your school friends right at the college friends you again get those memories back and that kind of bonding which you have with your friends is always yeah. so i think making friend you need to be little bit you know, flexible should not have to any things in your mind just let it go if you want to uh, talk you should have some thing can talk so i never had issues very few but my son has had he's any very less than for a friend <laughs> so that difference we can find out did you ever have anything that you sort of worried too much about as you know when when you were growing up you were like it took over your mind and you stressed about it so much but as you grew older you were like oh this is this is not much of an issue and then 
some things you you know maybe probably argued with your parents over because sometimes you know when we're kids we're like no we don't want this and they're just like no no this is not the right thing and then maybe when you became a mom you kind of understood their perspective as well did you have these two like very different opposing scenarios um i never experienced much because my parents were very supporting Mm. but yes certain period of time when um any matter come for decision right so my parents were always very clear whatever you're planning stick with it okay and sometimes they say you don't do this you have to do this that time we think why they are forcing us to do this it's like no matter what seven o'clock you should be back mm-hmm. home right and then we always say why seven o'clock why can't we stay longer like eight uh, or maybe till eight thirty nine but now we know that staying for a longer hours outside when there is no connection because that time no mobile no? so you are only aware of where you are going or maybe the landline was the only option to check whether the child is at home or she left and then i know ki ya yeah, parents are really worried when children are not at home right they want their children to be safe and i think that same thing i'm having when my child goes somewhere out with his friend i say please be connected yeah right wherever you are and he get pissed off why should i tell you whom i am going with whom i am there and where i am going i say child i also had the same <laughs> issue right i also fight with my mom with the same that mama i am going i will come back but with whom you are going your parents should know right and now i think i know why my mother always say please tell me let your pay- friends come and meet you at home mm-hmm. sometimes i say can i go out right we are meeting at the park and say no better call them i am i will cook for all of you sit and eat but i should know that where you are are going with whom you are going so i think that has not changed and i think as a parent now i am understanding ki why my parents were always saying to be like no in touch and inform wherever you are going what you are doing so even till now if i'm going anywhere i call and say i'm going i'm going to the strip i'm going there and all so that they are aware of it so that habit grows and now there's most of the student, children i can say they don't inform their parents sometimes it's a shock for parents because we have many cases in uh, like in our journey where the as per parent the child is going to, to school, school yeah. right but sometimes they didn't turn up so that is a matter of concern yeah so it is all i think parents they want to know the child is safe and the same things with teachers they also want the child to be safe yeah so this is the only thing which i personally feel that that generation and now and the other thing is yes the financial literacy for your child whatever you are giving <laughs> you should have a record of it <laughs> my mom used to ask me what how you had spent that money and now i also ask my son i gave you this much of pocket money okay. now <laughs> there, there it is are you spending on the right food or you're just taking cheetos or the lays or just oh. taking ice cream so for us also it was same we used to go and buy biscuits and dairy milk chocolate the same thing happened <laughs> so my uh, thing is given you are going for tuition and you have a gap take proper food may right? take falafel or sandwich so generation and the age and the thinking goes same you can't say it's different mm. only thing is the item changed <laughs> did you ever freak out about anything you ever make a big deal out of things and then once you look back at it now you know in those certain moments you're like no why did i do that there are certain moments and uh, then i feel you know i could have done a better only in that reference because um, i wanted to have certain subject combinations and i didn't go uh, say i didn't get and when i went the two subjects you know i didn't find it more comfortable so when i came back home and i spoke to my parents that i'm not very comfortable with these combination of subjects can i change it so they said think before you change because at certain level you find out that many areas around right need this kind of combination which you are planning to take as a profession or you are thinking your future should be 
So then I say, no, I need to change. Then they say, okay. But when I see, it was a very slow journey. That was a very good decision. But yes, I I think I could have taken that kind of like, no, let's go. I should try. Like I, at that period of time, after 10th, I had lost the hope very fast. Mm. Chemistry was a subject I didn't like. <laughs> and, um, I thought, you know, I'm not going to study this. <laughs> maths, were you good at maths? Uh, math and chemistry, both was the worst subject. <laughs> so I don't want it to. Both my, in my entire family was a science graduate, science and maths graduate. And I was the only one who changed the subject. So I thought, okay, at least till 12th, I could have tried. Because you, without trying, you cannot say that. Yes, it's difficult. Only at that point, and uh, yes, Another thing was, um, I could have taken risk of taking that IPS exam. Oh. <laughs> so these two things I really feel, but maybe God has decided that I should be in the education line and uh, meeting everyone, like you and the other students. Uh -huh. All good. <laughs> so let's talk about spirituality a little. Last few questions before we move on to a little game. So you have, you know, as you mentioned previously, you've been pretty spiritual. How did that come about, you know, and do you think that sort of has definitely changed your perspective on things and how you used to deal with situations? Yeah. Actually, my entire family has a very strong spiritual background. So even my grandfather, actually my actual grandfather, the father, he passed away so early, but uh, my father's uncle was there. And uh, he was so connected with us because he was in a spiritual uh, field and uh, he didn't get married. So when we born, so he was automatically att attached to all three of us with my brother, me and my sister. And whenever we go to him and he always like to make us sit and he always give us a life lesson. Mm -hmm. So he say why this, why we should do this, why we should not eat non-veg, right? There is a reason behind and he used to tell us so effectively, I can say more than effectively with the logic, mm. right? With the science behind that, the uh, proper reasoning. From there, actually, we had like adopted these good practices, uh, respecting your parents, respecting people around you, taking care of people, right? Because he was a person who has really devoted his life for others. And he had adopted four or five children. And like, you know, the entire year he was like uh, giving, giving, giving and like, you know, working for others. So that was a kind of base which he had already made for all of us. And uh, I think most of the people, they must be aware of the Radha Swami Satsang and all. And he always say, just go and sit in the Satsang, right? Listen, because when you listen, automatically you will adopt those practices. And when I got married, again, I think God has decided <laughs> to have it. Uh, my father-in-law was also in a highly spiritual background and he was into all this. He was an actual chemical engineer, but he also developed this interest, like meditating, talking about the science, talking about the Indian religion with a scientific explanation. And whenever we used to sit, he always say that it's the religion or any of the spirituality goes with energy. And he used to tell us, you need to understand, you need to catch the vibes, right? What kind of energy you have around you, which energy you need to take, how to control the negative energy. And everything he was like giving us a very good examples. And then he establishes. Uh, biggest temple back in Mumbai and uh, it is the only one, one and only temple of Mata Bhagavad Gita in the entire Maharashtra. So it is a big ashram. People, they used to come to the, the same kind of practices and all. So that was a period again, which was like left, again came into a different picture. And we do understand the importance of meditation. We do understand that how it is bringing out you as a different personality. 
So it is not only that just uh, standing in front of God and praying, but this is something how you are leading your life, right? Developing what is there within you, right? Everyone knows that we have a chakras, right? Everyone knows we have a power inside, but we never take it out. And if you want to take it out, there is a certain way. So like yoga and the other, these are the general way to like you no know, bring that that the power inside you. And this is what he taught us. And unfortunately, he is not with us, but me, my father, and entire family is trying to spread his legend and legacy as much as possible. So this is something which we are trying to balance both. My husband and me always try that wherever we go, we talk about his work, even the temple, whatever he has started, we should carry. There should not be any stoppage. So thank God, God has given us that courage. to like no deal with it so so do you uh, involve any of these like spiritual practices for like your students you teach that to them cuz i don't think anyone would ever teach them these important lessons you yeah. know so do you how do you incorporate it do you teach them like mindfulness meditation or anything like that yes because this is something very important mm-hmm. i say it's not about religion mm-hmm. it's all about your personality spiritual so you should know first thing i always tell my students think that you are in that person's place yeah right so bullying was really under control because when you start keeping yourself in that person's point right and the issues which comes up with in terms of bullying meditation spiritual talk really help a lot so the counseling department are really helping us <laughs> this kind of psychological attacks <laughs> and also it's like knowing their inner confidence because most of them they are like it's hidden somewhere right even they are confident but not that confident enough that really can deal up with the problems because nowadays you know the children are very easily they get distracted right now they have a very uh, common term stress right i am under stress i am demotivated so spirituality some or the other way really giving them that kind of like the upgrade so yes teaching and this meditation attention 30 seconds of self time so mm-hmm. in sometimes class if it is taking too much of my say okay let's go for 30 minute silence okay so 30 seconds so they just sit they just deep take a deep breath and close their eyes and the entire class goes very really so so you find the differences there so that's the reason that nowadays even in uh, at schools wellness meditation and these kind of programs are started and the one one more best practices we have started in our school is before exam we are taking these kind of practices like you want to listen prayer yes we'll recite for you you want to play with pet because pets are the one who release all of your stress yes we'll bring the pet play as much as you can <laughs> if you want to draw yes there are different colors select your color and paint it so this is a different way which has actually helped us to work more for our students and i think somewhere this is spirituality and the way you actually think right give every student and teacher and the other to plan more wellness activities for students and this is what we actually need and that's the reason that we had introduced the wellness managers in every class so now this structure is really growing very well so i can say yes this base has actually helped me in terms of planning new ideas and new innovations in the area of wellbeing so it is working well wow so through that you know uh, how do you sort of you know go out of your way to help students be creative you know obviously through these practices they discover a lot of things yeah. but how do you sort of other than that how do you go out of your way to make sure that they receive that sort of creative treatment and they get a uh, maximum opportunities to sort of find parts of themselves that are hidden you know through like creativity and stuff like that and have you ever seen like in real time any sort of stories unfolding where you realize a child is going to realize their potential in like through creative ways and they're like oh this is yeah. maybe what i love uh i always try students to find out what best they have everyone has one or the other way of having some hidden talent mm. right only thing is you need to identify and polish it 
I'll just share one small example. There was a child. Um, he was special need child, and he need to like you know, everyone was like you are not studying. The parent are pressurizing him to get at least that this level. Or they had made a kind of like you no know, a a bar for him that you have to reach there. And child was like, very much depressed, and he was trying his level best, reaching. Okay, I have to score this much. I have to score this much. And people are like, no parents were like, if you are not going to study, you will not get a good job. This and that, and admission. So we had one conference because now children are very much into MUNs. So it's a model like United Nations conference was there, and somebody said, ma'am, this boy clicked very good photograph. I say okay. Anyways, it's a student led program. I say why don't you come join as a photographer for the conference? And he was very happy. And they say, ma'am, can I bring my camera? I say okay. And because he loves photography, the parent has given him a nice uh, camera. It's, it's a, just a standard camera. So he bought and really he did a wonderful shots. It's like his capturing to those moment was like different from the other photographers. So then I ask you, then you are clicking so nice photograph. Why don't you just try some more? Then say, will you call me for all school programs to click photograph? I say, okay, you are most welcome. Just come, and you believe me. Day by day, then parents also supported. We spoke to the parent because he is clicking good picture, and I think you should motivate him. And they bought a nice DSLR and everything. And the way he came up, and now he is doing. Proper photography course, and he established as one of the official photographer for the film industry. And that was a time I can say yes. Similarly, one more children was there, like a few group of uh, students were there, and they were very good in debate. And this group was like known for their like no high standards mm -hmm. and. For their scoring, one boy was like a chalta firta encyclopedia, <laughs> and the parent wanted him to be doctor. And we used to debate a lot in class, and we used to discuss a lot about the politics, about the law, how we can bring changes in the society. And I don't know how it triggered him that he said, "Ki ma'am, I want to be a lawyer." I say, "Are you confident enough that you want to be in this profession? Because I know you are very good in uh, academics. You are very good in scientific." Uh, Like no studies and all, he said no, ma'am. Till like no last month, I was very sure. But now when I am going into this, I feel that really I can do. Parents were like no, literally crying. Mother was like suddenly he is changing his life. This and that and all, and he graduated till like, no, the twelfth. He did with science and all, and then suddenly he wanted to do CLAD. And they say, ma'am, please tell him. I say okay, just sit and listen what he is trying to say. And his view was very clear, and then he decided to go for a law. Now he's a successful lawyer. Wow! Back and back. Wow! So I think these are the two different uh, stories, and like this, I have so many stories. <laughs> so it's like I feel that I think teaching is a very good profession. People say it's a noble, but I really feel it is really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a good profession. So you get so many stories which you can collect. One of my student is uh, he was working with Tesla designing for the super uh, Hyperloop, and that story is also something similar. Where he wanted to go for the automobiles, and mm -hmm. the parent wanted him to go for medical. He said, "No, you should see what you are good in, right? And what you want to take it." And they feel very comfortable any issues. Sometimes they are not comfortable with their parent, but they are very comfortable with me even discussing about the. Any of the relationship issues, they say, "Ma'am, can you please guide?" <laughs> so that kind of, I think, uh, the bonding developed with these students, and I'm happy to be with them. Wow, that was so so inspiring. You've definitely influenced them in so many ways. You've influenced so students. You have a collection of all these like incredible stories that you can always go back to. You know. It's it's more like uh, they give a story, I must say. It's like we are just a, a source, mm -hmm. but students are amazing. They have something in the, them. Only thing is teachers need to find out. Yeah, and if you find out, then they really come out very well. 
some of our students are like uh, they are very good in singing and now they are like you no know, they were in a studies but uh, few of our uh, team has really supported me you should go you should try singing and all and now i think there was some south me same like a singing star i mm-hmm. gave something indian idol indian idol correct so they were selected and now they are into the some of the nice singing <laughs> so i think this is something which we need to see what the children is good at mm-hmm. it's not always studies it's not always books but this is something which they are good in so hopefully that they can take it further wow so now we have reached the final part of our episode which is a little game i came up with so just think quick okay don't you know think fast <laughs> and be honest okay okay <laughs> try <laughs> all Let's right try. so first question what is a secret fact about you oh <laughs> <laughs> okay um uh, tamper tempered by my team mm-hmm. by uh, students because they really uh, take good care of me and they are a, they are like when i say something so they do just because of me so sometimes i feel like no, i'm too much tempered by them <laughs> <laughs> so that is i think so you kind of remind me of tari zameen because he realizes his potential and he helped the student you know he's like you're good at painting this is i yeah. believe in you and this is good so you've kind of been that way for so many years. and that is not only with my student but with my teachers also yeah so if i say girls and the boys this work has to be done and believe me they do mm. just for the name say hey, okay uh, this part need to be done but it's all because they love me mm. <laughs> they really yeah. give me a good Yes, I'm really pampered by them. My mother and my father also pampered. You know, they are like, okay, my mother-in-law also, it's like kind of like, okay, giving me a full protection. So I have a pampered child. <laughs> so what is the most uh, creative thing you've done recently? Uh, recently, creativity in terms of, um, I do a lots of painting. So yes, I had completed my, one never lost it period which i was like uh, try to working from uh, so many uh, years but because i was not able to finish it because of the my time and the uh, other commitments so this in the finished it my son like nice exciting so if your life was a movie what would it be called my life in the form of movie oh my god there's a one movie in this uh, I'm very bad in movies. Okay, I rarely watch movies, but yes, there was a one uh, movie of uh, Rani Mukherjee playing the role of teacher. Hitchki. Hitchki. Yes. So I keep my yes. <laughs> very much connected with uh, that because certain areas, its storyline is not same, but yes, I think mm-hmm. that can be yeah part of. Well, yeah. So what's your guilty pleasure? Sometimes I get angry on myself. <laughs> that's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> wow, that's a guilty yeah. pleasure. You like getting angry? I like. Oh, oh, uh, oh my god! Not exactly, but <laughs> yes. Sometimes with fun. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I love to tease him. Okay, because he's the only child. Uh-huh. So sometimes me and my husband we try gang uh, up on him. Yes. <laughs> and uh, whenever he comes. I always try to like you know, do something which he gets irritated. So you watch this and you go like, "Oh, mom, what is it, mom? Please." Then I say, "Okay, if anything is happening, so it's like because he's he don't have siblings, so I always try to okay, sibling, yeah, I don't want to do it." So then when he is going out, he he is ready with all these kind of problems and issues. <laughs> wow. Well, that's the first time where like parents he doesn't have a sibling. He's like, okay, you will learn what that's like. It's like you will suffer through that. Pain. Oh yes, so I had even the father and son. They both fight for chocolates. They fight for sweets. They fight for cold water. Cold water. <laughs> and when they walk around, they push each other. It's like no, who will reach first? So sometimes even we had a competition. Okay, let's run, see who will reach first. 
and uh, hiding each and every one's things. 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 Yeah. Very so, fun. Yeah. It's exciting <laughs> though. It's nice memories. So, you know, you can look back on them and you're like, I had fun. Yeah. yeah. So last question is, what is a secret that nobody knows? Something you've hidden from everyone. Something that you did as a kid. A secret that no one knows. Okay. Uh... I I used to keep lots of chocolate in my bag, okay. And uh, sometimes because I was very fond of sweets, my mom uh, she used to give us little money, okay, in case if she because she was also working. So if she is late and uh, nobody is at home, so at least I can go and buy something. So instead of those proper thing, I used to buy so many chocolates, <laughs> and I always put it in my bag. And if teacher goes here and there, I used to take out one chocolate. Not as it was on mine, let's say. <laughs> and that's the reason I lost my two teeth. <laughs> oh, cavity. Cavity. And then your mom found out how yeah. mad was she. <laughs> and one more thing. Uh, my father actually got worried because of that. I used to eat chalk. <laughs> the sleep chalks. The dead, the bored ones. And it is like I was so fond of it. He liked to sitting and I was keeping my hand like this. And I'm eating and my father got worried that she must be having stones. She was like, it's like, sometimes it's like five, five, six, six chops in a day I used to eat. <laughs> I have chalk in my room right now. <laughs> now, now that is over. <laughs> no, because that's where my mind went. I'm like, I have chalk right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that time it was like, I don't know, maybe because of the um, calcium deficiency or something. But I used to like that taste. Surprisingly, I heard about this one time where people were like, where someone told me, like, like oh yeah, people like eating chalk. After yeah. that, I forgot about it. Now I'm yeah. just like... And I remember I I did till 11th. <laughs> so that was a thing which nobody knows. My God. How did you think? Yeah. Yeah. So then my father took me to doctor. Therapy. Yeah. <laughs> And they say maybe she is having any deficiency because obviously the vitamin deficiencies and all. And then doctor asked me, but why are you eating? This? <laughs> because smaller kids they eat when they their teeth are uh, coming around, so they used to lick wall, they eat sand, which was very common in the childhood when they were like oh, three or four year like this. Then I say, uncle, the taste of the chalk is too good, <laughs> and it was like a very fine uh, line line particles and all. And then he said, but it is not good. 100% it's to cause some issues in your stomach and kidney. And then he explained me very nicely. And then I said, oh, I have to control it. It took time. I still remember four to five months it took for me to came out with this habit. So that was a very, I can say, one and only bad habit I had. Oh my God. Okay. Now I think we can end our episode on that very high note. <laughs> some time to process so before we wrap things up uh, is there any words of wisdom i call it wow no one ever gets the joke because i'm like words of wisdom and it's like wow <laughs> so is there anything you can say um, just looking at the camera anything i personally feel that most of the students and most of the people nowadays are not able to cope up with issues around them and people say hard work is a success right that normally gives you a key to success. But I say in present world, diplomacy is a key to success. This is something different because you need to know how to be a diplomat. Because you cannot always end up with conflicting people. You need to know people. You need to understand people. You need to know how to react. Because it's more like understanding. It's more like collaborating. It's more like living someone's life. So... This diplomacy is not playing game, but diplomacy is yes, handling things calm, handling things calmly and the way people they want to, which can avoid conflicts and which can definitely bring best out of you. So diplomacy is key to success. Be a diplomat. <laughs> Be a diplomat. That's why all the, um, I can say political scenario, the foreign ministers, are the most strongest personality because they know how to be a diplomat. <laughs> so, this is what I personally feel you need to be. You are, everyone knows everyone is hardworking, everyone is doing well, everyone is capable enough of doing everything. But one thing is the patience, 
that is something people are missing. So be diplomat, but not in such a way that you really start playing games. <laughs> oh yeah, no mind games. Yeah, no mind games. But yes, try to understand the situation and act accordingly. So if the the situation based act, I can say. Yeah. Wow. So that brings us to the end of our episode. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much I for talking to us. I had I so much so <laughs> an exciting time. The chalk story will stay with me for a long time. <laughs> it was, this was like, no, uh, it was missed somewhere. Yeah. But today it triggered. Uh, I will I will make a separate like whole Instagram reel for it and I'll go like here, look, I'll tag IHS and I'll go like, look. <laughs> and they'll share it and your students will go like, man. That's why nowadays no chalk and it does in the classrooms. It's only smart board. Did you ever pick it up from the classroom also and start eating like the used no. ones? No. Okay, thank God. <laughs> now it's not. Because after that, it's like, then I realized, you know, then they say, you know what dirty water we are using and all. Then I realized, yeah, they are correct. <laughs> I think we should control. And that was a moment when I learned controlling many things. Mm. So. Yes, earlier before the conversation with the parent, the people around you, your uncle, your neighbor, everyone was like, they give you really a very good life lessons. So it's always better to listen to people. <laughs> they say, no, uh, if you want to learn, be a good listener. Mm. Yeah. So I think that is something everyone need to focus on. Be a good listener. So second life lesson. <laughs> All right. Thank you all for watching. Again, once again, thank you for being here. Thank you so and much. And I will see you all in our next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.